Hey everyone, today I'm going to be asking the question, just what exactly is Omega Flowey? Or Photoshop Flowey? Or Big Scary Flowey? Whatever your preference is. Now before we rush to the comments to say it's Flowey having absorbed the six human souls and steroids by the looks of it, I know that. However, I feel there's more to the design of this bizarre monstrosity than first meets the eye. Now there's several things to consider with the epic final boss of the neutral route. First of all, it looks like no other encounter in the game, firstly by being in colour, and secondly by being so detailed. It certainly looks like the sort of abomination that only Photoshop could accurately render. Also, how difficult it is. There's a few catch-up mechanics to ensure the fight isn't too frustrating, but I have no doubt that the vast majority of players were caught off guard the first time they fought it. Today though, I'm going to focus specifically on its strange appearance. Could there be a reason that Toby designed Omega Flowey to look how he does? Do games get more mind screwing than the end of Undertale's neutral route? After being tricked into thinking our entire game just crashed, we have to restart only before seeing a corrupted version of the game's intro, and we then stumble across Flowey as he explains what just happened. Here's a funny story. When I first played, I thought the ending really was just a pretentious cut to black, and I was extremely disappointed. I was about to call Undertale one of the worst games I'd ever played, before I started it again and my opinion did a full 180 turn. Before going on to the analysis of Flowey's crazy looking final form, Notice how he mentions not just humans and monsters, but everyone. Are there more than just humans and monsters in the world of Undertale? Maybe Flowey is just referring to animals, but who can say for sure? And so the fight begins, and we're confronted with what is surely one of the most terrifying, if not the most terrifying creature in all of Undertale. What makes it so scary, however, is that it really resembles nothing like a flower anymore. There's lots of tiny details to Omega Flowey that may hint that there's even more going on than is immediately obvious, so let's take a look. What often catches people's eyes first is Flowey's mouth, which is incredibly bizarre by itself, but even more bizarre when we take into consideration what it resembles. I've seen it said that it looks a bit like a Gaster Blaster, one of the attacks Sans uses. While I think this comparison is a bit clutching at straws myself, it's very true that Flowey blasts us with a laser from his mouth, just like the Gaster Blasters do, so perhaps they do have some connection. If there is a connection, however, it's somewhat unclear. Interestingly, it also resembles a monster from Snowdin called Giftrot. This comes across as a complete coincidence. Though is it also a coincidence that we encounter Giftrot just outside of the secret developer room? Is Toby trying to suggest something? If so, it really doesn't seem to be clear what. You could also argue that Giftrot's ears resemble Omega Flowey's nostrils, and its horns, covered in tinsel, look like the pipes and vines leading out of him. Why a random monster in Snowdin seemingly has so much in common with one of the game's final bosses is something of a mystery. However, we're still not done looking at Flowey's head. It also resembles an ability Asriel uses called the Hypergonor attack. This could make a little more sense. Though only his essence, Omega Flowey is still Asriel in some respects. As the Hypergonor attack just resembles a distorted version of Asriel's head, we can surmise that in an effort to reclaim his original body, Flowey failed and ended up as a twisted plant abomination you fight. He likely knew that he couldn't achieve the exact results with only six souls, so perhaps this was the second best choice. Well, the second best choice for killing you, at least. Finally, and to me this is the most interesting comparison of all, Omega Flowey's head also resembles the Determination Extractor from the True Laboratory. While we could write this off as a coincidence again quite easily, I actually think there could be more to their resemblance. For starters, the resemblance is much more uncanny and similar than anything else. Like Omega Flowey, the Determination Extractor has two protruding mandible-like mouthparts, along with giant eyes and several tubes leading from its body. That doesn't explain why these two things are connected, however. Surprisingly though, it goes deeper than just a mere similar appearance. We can assume that the Determination Machine was what was used to extract determination from the human souls. Where did Flowey come from? The True Laboratory. We have no idea what happens when the game glitches out for us. Could it be that in this time, Flowey uproots the laboratory and merges with the Determination Extractor in order to become as powerful as possible? There could be some residue determination left within the machine after all. Flowey would know to find determination there as he was born in the laboratory, so to speak. This also explains the oddly mechanical appearance Flowey has. Why isn't his body constructed entirely of plant matter and vines, if he's technically just a very determined flower with six human souls? Another point is the massive television on top of Flowey's mouth. The only other place we see a monitor even close to that size is within the laboratory. While I'm at it, I guess I'm going to have no other opportunity to mention this. What exactly is going on in the middle of the screen? A face appears to be writhing and screaming. Is this Toby Fox's face with some serious graphical filtering? Yeah, probably. It reminds me of the faces that came with the Game Boy camera, if you've ever seen those. I imagine it could be a reference to this. So what exactly is Omega Flowey? None other than the Angel of Death, of course. Asriel in some religions is an angel who has four faces and four thousand wings. 
and a whole body that consists of eyes and tongues. While Omega Flurry doesn't exactly fit this description, there's definitely some crossover. The most obvious one being that Flurry's true name is Asriel, just spelt differently. We're getting a little intertextual here, I see. So I suppose Flurry's darkest secret is that he's a loose reference to a biblical figure, and believe me, we have more than enough of those in media already. I guess Asriel has a little bit of Moses in him as well, what with the leading of his people to the promised land of the surface and all that. You could even argue that the breaking of the barrier was a bit like parting the Red Sea. Okay, I'll stop now. In conclusion, Omega Flurry is a distorted freak, who if saw late one night in a dark alleyway, would probably cause you to sh** your pants. Now one thing I do want to see is a battle between Omega Flurry and Gygas from Earthbound. That would surely be entertaining. One last thing I'd like to remark on is the green spiky balls with mouths that bounce around on the screen. Within the archive sprites, they're tagged as dentatas. What is a dentata, you ask? Apparently, a woman's vagina that contains teeth. Sorry to leave you with this incredibly morbid image, which I know you will now never unsee. This could be a connection to Gygus from Earthbound, considering that it's argued that fetus can be seen during that fight. What's up with quirky RPGs and their disturbing Freudian concepts? Well, hopefully that's enough to give you nightmares for today. Not that I set out to do that, of course. As always, stay determined, and I'll see you next time.